OK, well, it is 10 10. So we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Kelly Dubay. I'm with Tetra Tech and I am your moderator for this session. And I'm also with Adriana Burke, who you met at the top of the forum, and she's here to help with any technical issues you may have. So if anything is going awry, please feel free to just drop a note in the comments or in the chat and Adriana will lend a hand um, from where she's at. Also, just remember folks to keep your mics muted and to help with bandwidth, turn your cameras off. If you have questions during the presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat. And if you want to show our presenters some feedback, you can use the emojis. And many of you were doing that in the previous session, so thanks for that. And uh, I will introduce our speakers and turn it over to them. Today for this session uh, on the Shallow Brook Elementary School Riparian Buffer, we have Ryan Davis with the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay. And we have Jody Sulpuzio from Penn State Extension. They are volunteers and was said at the beginning of the forum, they're here today volunteering their time to share with us their experiences. And again, um, any sort of approach or any type of uh, technology isn't necessarily endorsed by EPA or DEP, but it's just the experience of our presenters. And with that, I will turn it over to Ryan and Jody. Thanks for being here with us today. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, I guess, uh, Jody, do you want to, oh, shoot, I hope I'm, okay, I think I, yeah, do you want to go ahead and get started? Uh, I might have to turn my camera off. I'm, I think I'm having internet issues. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, so first, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, Ryan and I, uh, we we're talking about a riparian buffer project that we did at Northeastern School District uh, below Shallow Brook Intermediate School. Um, we'll be talking about how we got the community involved and how we planned uh, the project. So first, I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, Master Watershed Stewards. So this is a program through Penn State Extension. Uh, we train volunteers. Uh, and water resources so they take a pretty in-depth training it's about 40 hours all different topics and then what they do is go out into the community to teach about our water resources and they do on the ground projects like planting riparian buffers uh, designing and planting rain gardens we have a very active stream monitoring team do stream cleanups and just quite a variety of things in the community so our program here in york county is pretty strong um, and it's expanding across the state. Uh, there's about 20 counties that have the program currently. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ryan now. Um, yes, thank you. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I'm frantically closing tabs and uh, programs here to try to speed things up. So I hope I'm not too laggy on my audio. Um, but yeah, I'm Ryan Davis with the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay. Um, so we are a Chesapeake wide organization. Um, I I work out of our Pennsylvania office uh, here in Lancaster City, um, and uh, I'm our forest program manager. So all of our reforestation programs come under my purview, um, which is uh, what this partnership was all about. Um, we can look here uh, at York County. Um, our project site is there in that cutout box uh, on the lower right corner. Um, you can see that you know little red circle around Hartman Run. Um, but uh, like everywhere, you know, uh, in PA, we're maybe a little bit behind the eight ball. Um, on uh, restoring our streams uh, to the level that we'd like to see. Um, and so this project is actually going to really take a big chunk out of the WIP um, goals for, or for the CAP goals rather, uh, for York, York County. So Jody, if you could advance it. Um, of course, I think everybody here, you know, is, is well familiar with riparian forest buffers as a practice, um, as something that uh, is, you know, re really efficient at reducing uh, some of our loading for uh, nitrogen, for phosphorus, for sediment. Um, but what I'd like to focus on is, you know, because we need voluntary, uh, um, you know, participation in, in these programs, we need landowners to volunteer uh, to do these, is all these other kind of co-benefits um, that come along with it. And, you know, not just meeting stormwater goals, um, but all the other many benefits that these uh, is would actually motivate landowners to say yes to these practices. Um, so that's wildlife habitat, pollinator habitat, um, saving money and time, especially when we're looking at the municipal 
sector and a lot of the open land um, is, you know, maybe park land. There's a lot of opportunities to do riparian forest buffers on public land to really save public dollars. Um, uh, but something I, I really like to think about is that um, riparian forests, period, are just a really fantastic resource. They're just really cool places. Um, they're very unique. They're ecologically sensitive. They're ecologically important. Um, and so for us to bring them back to the landscape is a really valuable thing that we're doing. It's not just about putting in a filter for sediment um, and for, for runoff. And I think that's when we get really into the weeds about some of these goals and the MS4s and everything, you know, that's how we think about these practices. But this is an ecological restoration project that is really bringing tons and tons of benefits. And it's kind of just, you know, one of the many ways it's working for us is by reducing those nitrogen phosphorus sediment and other pollutant loads. Um, Speaking of the WIP, Jordan, if you could go to the next slide to take a look at the uh, at the waters here um, uh, in York County. And so, you know, we are in the tier one here uh, for the WIP. So high priority, you know, 25% of the, the reductions um, in nitrogen are supposed to come from, you know, just Lancaster and York County. Most of that from Lancaster, to be fair. Uh, but there there's a lot of impaired waters um, in York County um, and a lot of work that needs to be done here. And again, we are kind of in the north section um, uh, for this project, but that is a stream that is impaired due to pathogens. Um, uh, if you could go to the next one, Jody, and we'll, uh, okay. yeah, there we go. So um, uh, York County has a really robust goals for riparian forest buffers. Um, if you're, we're just looking at, you know, meeting kind of what is sort of required, sort of baseline from, you know, the state's WIP, you know, translating that to the cap, it would actually be less than 6,000 acres uh, for a goal of, of new riparian forest buffers planted, but York saw it as, again, it's just a very cost-effective, efficient thing, and it, it brings so many co-benefits. So York County wanted to go uh, for 6,000 acres, which is super exciting. And that is in the agricultural sector, where most of these will be planted. Um, in the urban sector, because it's such a developed county, uh, the goal was only 98.2 acres of riparian forest buffer. And we'll talk about this project a lot, obviously, uh, but we're, we're going to get close to uh, 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 close to, to a fifth of that goal for urban riparian forest buffers just with this one school site. So that just kind of shows you, you know, how robust uh, uh, this is and how, how much possibility there is um, with these kind of practices. Um, so yeah, sorry, you can go ahead. Uh, so I'll actually, I, I think I'll turn it over to Jody, who has the, the you know, the uh, more of a relationship with Mark here, uh, who kind of opened the door for this project for us. Yeah, so Mark is a master watershed steward in York County, but he's also a teacher at Northeastern School District. He teaches field bio and stuff. And he, you know, he has been kind of sitting on this idea for a long time. There, This property uh, butts Hartman Run, which is about a mile from the Susquehanna River. And, you know, the maintenance staff was mowing right up to the very edge of Hartman Run for quite a, a distance, and this land cannot be used for future building or any kind of athletic field. So he he came to me uh, with a, this project idea, and I had kind of already met with Ryan and uh, DCNR folks about where we could do buffers in York County. So we ended up taking this project to Northeastern School District. We took it to the administrators first. Uh, they were pretty on board, um, asked some questions, but Ryan came prepared with maps and stuff. And then we ended up taking it to the school board and they unanimously voted to plan. It was like 16.7 acres. And I think then later they ended up calling and wanted us to plant the full 20 acres, which we had proposed. Um, so Ryan, do you want me to keep going? You good with yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Sounds okay. great. Um, so this is just an area. This is just a visual of what the stream actually looked like in some places. They just mowed vast, vast amounts of grass. So lots of time and lots of resources. Uh, you can see too, a lot of the stream has cut banks, typical York County stream here. So um, Again, we couldn't do the full repair stream repair, so a buffer was a cheaper way to hopefully make a ben or make a difference here with Hartman Run. So Ryan was the main planner of the actual buffer. Um, that's his expertise. Uh, myself, as a, the watershed steward coordinator here in York County, uh, we 
Ryan kind of worked with the master watershed stewards as they helped to plan and actually coordinate the actual planting days. So um, that's kind of how we worked together, um, but we had to coordinate different aspects of the project with the school district, which we'll talk more about. Um, Ryan, you good if I keep going? Yeah. yeah go okay. Ahead. All right. Um, so the we DCNR was the funder for the program. So the actual cost for the original 16.7 acres was around $67,000. Uh, the funding source is called Stream Relief. Uh, it's run by DCNR. So they basically give many grants of a flat $4,000 per acre for buffers. And there's other funding options through CREP. Um, maybe you've heard of the Keystone 10 Million Trees Initiative by CBF. Um, so Ryan is really one to talk to about some of the uh, funding sources. And Ryan, I'm just going to let you talk about the maps in the this part, and then I'll hop back back on in like two slides. Excellent. That sounds great. Yeah, and I'll I'll say too. Um, I I think something, and hopefully we, you know we're, we'll reflect it here in our little chat. But on the partnership note, um, we kind of don't. It's crazy how closely this partnership has run. You know, we we really kind of, um, yeah, it, we we almost are just kind of a cohesive unit, you know, working on this together. And I, I think that's really cool. And I, it, it's the way that we get the most done. And and this kind of was one of the early projects that Jody and I started working on together. And I mean, geez, I don't know how many we've done together. Even I've kind of lost count. We're just adding more and more and more. Um, uh, and so th I think this is a perfect model uh, for moving forward. Um, but uh, so basically you can see here, this is this is what we proposed. We did a walk um, now two summers ago with Mark um, during the summer and uh, to, to look at some areas and we just figured, well, anything that has no potential to be, be developed, you know, why don't we why, why don't we plant it there? Um, and so this was our kind of initial plan uh, that we had proposed to them. Um, and uh, we ended up being able to plant that purple area. Uh, in the first phase, so if you could go there to the next. And when I do plans, um, it, it is very, you know, it, it's not doesn't look like a landscape architect did it because I'm not a landscape architect. <laughs> I'm just using Google Earth to really quickly, easily uh, generate, you know, some of these areas uh, to get numbers of trees and to make sure the maintenance crew knows kind of roughly how things will be laid out, where things will be, um, and they can proceed from there. So uh, this is the first phase that we planted in October of 2019 um, and Jody has a bunch of awesome pictures uh, to show everyone of our preparation for that planting um, and for the planting itself um, and I again I think this model uh, where we are working really closely with the individual master watershed stewards volunteers to help us carry things forward I think this is the way to go um, into the future so go ahead take it away Jody. Okay so what the master watershed stewards since they have to volunteer 50 hours of time their first year we actually made this a class project for our 2019 master watershed steward trainees um, ryan worked with them to involve them and in some of the planning like i said uh, we met a few times at the site every time it was a day like today it was raining or thunderstorming or something <laughs> um, and i know it added to ryan's workload like he's kind of has this down to a science when he does projects by himself, but this was really to teach them about riparian buffers and how they can help more in the future uh, with other projects in the county. And they'll they'll be able to then teach others um, as we move along. So this is just some examples Ryan met with them uh, so they could prep, learn how to properly plant a tree. That's a critical part of the project for success. Uh, and because those volunteers were really going to be working with students and the community members. So we, we needed to make sure they had the proper planting techniques. Uh, we had several meetings and email exchanges with administration. It was really important to keep the administration um, up to date and on board. We also invited the maintenance staff. That's probably the most critical uh, Part of this is working with the building and grounds people just to clear up any concerns. Um, having them on board is just extremely important. So things that Ryan talked to them about, like mower width, um, you know, planting in rows so that they can easily mow uh, in between the trees. They were contoured with the stream so it didn't look exactly like straight lines. Uh, but the, the maintenance staff could um, 
you know, they, they had an idea of what to expect before the day of the planting. So this is just a list of the native trees that Ryan had picked out, the trees and shrubs that were planted. Uh, this was just the first phase planting, so it was about seven acres, I want to say. So we still have like 13 acres left to plant, uh, but we planted potted trees. They were in like one inch by five inch pots. They were not bare root uh, seedlings, so they should have a better success than the bare roots. Um, and we also promoted the project. Uh, we wanted to make this, since it was a really big buffer project in the county, and maybe I think, Ryan, it's the largest one you had worked on up to this date, uh, we wanted to, to invite, you know, state leaders, community leaders to this event and kind of have a kickoff event. So we worked with the school district um, and had a, a promotional day uh, where the students came down to plant, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, but we sent out invitations to different state leaders and community members that could attend that. And then we also invited the public to a planting that we held the following Saturday. Uh, so this project was uh, very close to Governor Wolf's house. And since it was funded through DCNR, we wanted to and we did invite him. Unfortunately, he couldn't attend, but um, we had other state leaders attend, which I'll talk about soon. Whoops. Um, and project promotion, uh, we promoted it. We had some videos done that we shared. Um, I'm not going to share it today just because of time, but we had the superintendent there of Northeastern School District on the left. Uh, she she talked and we did a promotional video. Ryan and I both spoke in the video too. And we were able to share that on social media and uh, just talk about riparian buffers and the importance of them in our stream systems. I'm going to pass the video here. <laughs> we did some education before the planting day also. Um, I know I met with all of, some of the third grade classrooms. There's three class or three school buildings that are down on this campus near Hartman Run. So we met with them, did a macroinvertebrate stream study, talked about riparian buffers. Uh, but, you know, in the future, there's just endless opportunities to do education here. I know Mark takes his classes down there quite a lot, and so do some other science teachers. I just did a stream study there uh, Thursday last week with, or Friday with the Envirothon students. So it's a great place to teach, um, and it's not just a place to teach about science, but they can do st statistical things. Mark's doing uh, some experiments, what keeps deer away, like using soap and stuff like that on the tree tubes. Uh, so there's all kinds of things. ELA teachers could go down there and do writing exercises. So endless learning opportunities here. Um, a few weeks prior to the planting, Ryan flagged the area in plenty of time uh, for the school to decide if the layout was OK or if they wanted anything moved. Um, it's really important that they can see that before planting day. So this was just the morning of the planting day. So uh, it was, like I said, during school hours. So, and we, we did want to promote it to showcase it as a project that could be modeled across the state, anywhere that has um, large, large areas of mowed land that they could uh, plant riparian buffers. Even if you don't have a stream, it could be a model for an upland tree planting, which will also help the county meet its nitrogen reduction goals. Whoops. Uh, so we got there bright and early. Ryan had everything organized and ready to go for the students. Uh, there were specific arrival times for volunteers and guests, and we had the master watershed stewards work all of that coordinating part out. Um, the school was not, they were in session for the kickoff event, um, and they had early dismissal that day. So we had to have people come in and they had to leave and get out of there before buses came. Um, but we did make sure that people that only those invited guests attended and then all of the volunteers had to have their clearances, but we had name tags, all of that stuff, photo releases. Um, one thing to think about if you would do a big planting like that is, uh, or like this, is restrooms. We did not really have restrooms available, but we figured volunteers could um, scoot somewhere if they can't wait for two hours. But that that was just one thing if you're in a remote area to think about for a, a long planting. 
So we did invite, like I said, the local and state leaders. So our county commissioners attended and Cindy Dunn, uh, the secretary to DCNR. Uh, you can also see pictured there is my boss from Penn State. Um, and Ryan's boss came as well. Uh, this is him pictured with Kate Fritz, for, uh, the direct, executive director for the Alliance. And it was kind of stressful. So I was very stressful, you know, having over 200 kids help plant in two hours of time. And actually we had less than that after we had uh, the public, you know, the state leaders speak and stuff. So we had to have a very, very organized, I'd say the one hiccup of the day, um, the head of the maintenance department uh, came by that morning and wanted flags moved. Um, where he did not want things planted. And that's one reason that Ryan had marked things uh, early on was so that we could move things around. And it's not really the time to do it the morning of uh, the planting. So that was kind of a stressor of the day, but um, not too many hiccups after that. Um, Secretary Dunn spoke, uh, State Representative Keith Gillespie and um, and Kate Fritz spoke. Uh, about 250 students attended the event. Uh, Ryan demonstrated with the kids since they were going to be helping to plant. Uh, he did do a demo how to properly plant, even though we had um, watershed stewards on hand to help. But they planted a tree and then he also showed them how to install the stakes and the tree shelters. And then Cindy Dunn planted the first tree of the project. And master watershed stewards were assigned groups of students to work with. So we kind of had to come up with a detailed plan before that day because I knew it could turn into just complete chaos. So we actually used color coded bands and kind of had like, you know, Jeff would maybe work with the green team and and we just divided them up into small groups. So we had, you know, maybe 10 students with a watershed steward. Um, and they were actually sent to certain areas that we also color coded. So we didn't have everyone just kind of confused and all working in the same area. We figured 250 students really had to stay spread out and organized. So, um, you know, it was a great learning opportunity for the students. Uh, we really wanted it to be an educational experience for them. And Mark just called me last week and said, you know, I had a student come to me and say she helped with the tree planting and she actually chose to change what she wants to do with her future. So she wants to go into the environmental sciences now just because of the experience she had the day of this tree planting, which is pretty cool. Um, we also had helpers, uh, volunteers from Extension's uh, water team. They came from across the state to help, which was nice. And we also had help from other conservation partners. So whether it's volunteers for the Alliance, DCNR, um, NRCS, uh, the Lower Susquehanna Riverkeeper, the Conservation District. We tried to get as many colleagues who are working on the WIP and the CAP here in the county to help. And I think it was pretty rewarding for them as well. Um, we didn't know really how to have the schools select students, uh, but we did want to have people from every school building if we could just to kind of reach out to as many kids as we could. So we decided to have the schools or our suggestion to the school district was, you know, why don't you invite the Envirothon students from each school building? Um, they also had the field biology students and also the special needs students. Those were kind of the three groups that we worked with. Um, and I think it, it turned out really well. So that's how we kind of narrowed it down um, to impact the most students that we could. Um, it's really important to have the support of the Northeastern School District staff, and I just happened to have several teachers from that school district as watershed stewards. So it really worked out nicely that way, um, but the superintendent helped plant, uh, the principal from Northeastern High School came to help plant, and it was really good to have them at both of our planting events. Uh, so the first day was a great success. Um, it was really great fun and I think the students will remember it for quite a long time. And I know at least with my own kids, uh, granted they their mom does this as part of her job, but two of them were actually at this planting 
And it was just pretty neat. Soon after that, um, I I don't know, we were driving in Lancaster County somewhere and my youngest boy was like, mom, mom, there's a riparian buffer. So I think the students are going to make that connection when they see these uh, tubes all over the county. Um, and more and more as time goes, they're going to understand what riparian buffers are and the benefits they have to water quality here in the state. So then we had this community planting um, where we and just put, you know, put it out to the public and through the school district. Uh, we had probably about 100 community members come and we had, I don't know, maybe 600 trees left to plant, 500 or 600 trees. We were done within two hours. Uh, again, it maybe didn't stay as organized as we had planned, but they got the job done. And uh, I think after two hours, they were kind of ready to keep on planting. They're kind of like, we're done. So COVID has definitely messed up the planting for 2020 and even this spring. Uh, so we're planning to wrap it up um, in the fall. So I think, you know, the community will be on board to help. They really seem to enjoy it. And we hope that, you know, the kids who did help with this planting, you know, when the trees are 15 years old or 20 years old, they'll, they'll remember and say, hey, I helped to plant that forest. Okay, so um, I'm just going to skip past this one. So this is just a picture of the community planting day. It was kind of, I have a video of that day, and it just, if you kind of would picture a workshop, is everyone was just moving and kind of doing their thing as uh, you just hear the tapping of the hammers and stuff. It really was a great day. And this is just, again, the administrators uh, supporting and coming to help. And we had several teachers from the school district, too. And there's just some teachers from the school district. So this is uh, the, what the buffer looks, looked like after we planted it. Uh, me being there uh, last week, it's definitely, you know, trees are topping out of the tubes, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's just neat to see, you know, some of the wildflowers and stuff that are coming up in the, in the buffer area. So I just want to say, you know, the watershed stewards have quite a passion to make a difference. And um, even though you know there aren't master watershed steward programs in every county, um, there's other volunteer groups that you could engage to help with something like this. And, you know, I think this is just how one person's idea uh, really turned up this project into fruition and just the right connections were made and we were able to to get it done. So if you have or know of an area, it can't hurt to explore it. Um, it just may be able uh, to happen. Um, we did have good media coverage, too. I think this was ABC News. They're interviewing Ryan, so it's important you know, if you do a project like this with your municipality, uh, publicize it, get the media to cover it. Um, it's great for your municipality um, and it's great for our waterways. We did end up doing another planting then down by the governor's house. So we had a donation of trees from Rockleman's in D Dallas town. So this is a November planting that we did. The school owns a lot. It was across from the governor's house and uh, we, we ended up putting in about 100 oak trees. So it was a former sewing factory that was demolished and you can see uh, some of the site there, but I have to say this was probably the most difficult planting that I ever did, maybe Ryan too. Uh, we did not realize it until the day of the planting that we were planting in so much fill. There were rocks, bricks, we even hit pavement in some places. So. The oaks hopefully are mighty enough to survive, but um, it was pretty neat after uh, we ended up getting this uh, auger thing to, to drill the hose later that day. But it was neat. Um, the governor's wife contacted the school district um, right after we planted. And at first, when the school district told me, I was a little nervous, like, were they happy or were they not happy? <laughs> And they actually were very pleased and, I mean, they didn't know it was happening, um, but they wanted to know what kind of species were planted because they wanted to plant more um, on their property. So maintenance is key uh, to the success of any project, but especially with the buffers, 
you know, that area is going to flood from time to time, and it has flooded since we've planted. I have a team of watershed stewards who regularly go out and check the site. They have uh, things that they, they have extra tree tubes and stakes and stuff that they can fix and replace as needed. We did also replace some of the trees that didn't make it. One of our stewards was growing seedlings and they went ahead and replaced uh, or planted in the tubes that maybe uh, one of the trees didn't make it. So they just kind of keep at that and it's important to do it. Um, Ryan can also contract out um, if the school doesn't end up following through with some of the maintenance. Uh, he can contract out to get maintenance done. And then we did recognize uh, the, this partnership. Uh, we recognized both the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay and Northeastern School District were our outstanding partners for 2019. Um, we definitely couldn't have done this without the school district's uh, OK and, and the land. And we also couldn't have done this without Ryan's expertise and might I say his high energy to get the project done. So, you know, I just encourage you if you have a, a large area that you mow um, and, you know, anywhere, even in your municipality, if there's churches, uh, commercial sites, colleges, we just want to share this message across the state and use this as a model of what can be done. Um, to help us meet our goals to improve water quality. So Ryan, I don't know if you want to to wrap it up here and then we'll have yeah. time for questions. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks. Yeah, and I uh, I agree with Jody. This is I this is this is the example I think back to all the time. This one was just kind of a there's just some sort of magic about it. And I, you know, thinking about it over now the you know years. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It keeps coming up. You know, these keep the benefits keep coming up of this, you know, this one student wanting to kind of change her trajectory and get into this. And we, I keep getting inquiries about it and people keep noticing this. And I, I don't know. I don't think it's just because of the large size. I, I honestly think it's because of how many people we involve. Um, and, it, you know, I do over 100 acres of reforestation every single year. And, you know, usually we're, we're doing a lot with contractors or just with staff and, you know, we just get in there, we bang it out and we, we keep moving. The only person really, you know, involved is maybe some a, a couple volunteers who help and, and the landowner. Um, but even though this is way more work <laughs> to bring in the community and to get the kids involved and, and so many different stewards and volunteers touching this project, uh, that's where the magic comes from, you know, making this a community project uh, is is going to really magnify you know the benefits um, and the awareness and and when we're working in a situation where we're trying to convince private landowners to do this it's it's kind of a battle of kind of hearts and minds um, so we need to change as many hearts and minds as we can you know uh, so getting these in the news and getting big coverage and getting more and more and more people involved is 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 the best um, and uh, I would not be able to do it uh, on my own I'm running around like crazy especially during the planting seasons to, to get all this stuff done and so again you know for the millionth time partnering up with someone you know like uh, the Penn State Extension like even even other volunteer groups it could be a Trout Unlimited chapter um, it could be uh, a Boy Scout troop you know any other kind of you know volunteer focus group um, uh, you're going to really magnify um, the impacts of your project. So uh, we say, you know, your municipality could be next really, again, there's, there's space everywhere. Almost every municipality has some degree of space on public land. And yeah, it could be schools, it could be libraries, it could be churches that are not public land, but that, you know, are available. And whoever the landowner is, they're, they're going to be saving money by, by doing this. Um, Jody mentioned earlier that it could be upland plantings as well, not just riparian forest buffers, but um, there is this new lawn conversion program here in PA, and those uh, practices of urban forest planting and of conservation landscaping, which would be rather than planting trees in this area, converting it to a native meadow. Um, both of those do have uh, uh, load reductions uh, associated with them. So these are things, you know, it's kind of low hanging fruit, really, um, no pun intended, uh, for, for getting some good quick reductions. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, leveraging all of the different resources that are out there is going to really magnify um, how far you can go. So speaking of resources, if you could advance one more time, Jody. Um, so again, we have funding, not just the Alliance, but DCNR, other partners. Um, if you have space, if you have interest, you can go ahead and just reach out to me. My uh, email will be on the next slide here and Jody's. 
Um, no matter where it is, if it's in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, um, I likely have funding um, to help. Um, and if I don't have funding to help, then I likely know somebody who, who can help. So, you know, reach out if you have land, uh, if you have sites, if you, even if you just have, you know, interested folks um, in your municipality who want to kind of carry these projects forward. Um, we have the money to do it and we have the know-how. Uh, all we need is the, the space um, and, uh, and a little bit of planning uh, ahead of time. Um, so yeah, I think that's all for us. We can open it up to questions here now. Um, if anybody has any, I'm gonna look in the chat as well. Yeah, there were a couple, Ryan. Um, this is Kelly. The one that I see um, has to do with limiting the tree planting day to two hours. I don't know, Jody or Ryan, if you wanna talk about the rationale for that time limit. Yeah, that time limit was because the school district had early dismissal um, that day. And that was a sp specifically invite only. That was not open to the community. But the community planting day was, you know, we didn't have an end time. That was just until we were done. <laughs> so hopefully that clarifies that. We just had Perfect. to get the guests out before buses arrived because then it would have been a traffic nightmare. Right. And, and that's always a well-oiled machine with their transportation, right? <laughs> um, the other question I see in the chat is, was this project able to reduce any contaminants for your MS4 permit? And was it able to be measured or estimated for reporting purposes? And Ryan, do you want to talk about the reporting part of, of this? Yeah, for sure. And so, yeah, uh, Easy answer is yes, uh, this does absolutely contribute. Um, you also happen to be talking to the, uh, uh, Jody is the, for the, the CAP, for the for York's CAP, the uh, project implementation uh, chair, I guess, or lead. Uh, and so, yeah, we are kind of responsible for sort of, you know, collating some of these projects um, and making sure they get counted. Uh, this one, because of the funding stream that it was through, which stream relief, um, it is being tracked through DCNR uh, generally, how we we at, you know being the alliance track our projects is they're funded from some source, right? Um, and so usually the funding source has a reporting component um, involved with it. So this was included in Practice Keeper um, uh, through DCNR. Uh, but when we do projects through, you know, Jody mentioned the uh, Keystone 10 million trees, which is Chesapeake Bay Foundation has you know free tree giveaway kind of program. Uh, then we do make sure that those get reported in Practice Keeper so that they are contributing. Um, do you have anything else to add on that, Jody? No, I don't think, I think that's, that's good. And we didn't have anyone from the municipality attend that day. I did invite them. Um, so, you know, we've worked with other municipalities for various projects um, and had a really great working relationship, partnership with them. So we've done stuff in the city, um, Windsor Township, uh, York Township. So, um, then working with that MS4 coordinator or the planner, whoever we're working with, they can help with, uh, you know, keeping track of that stuff that they do um, as well. That makes sense. I have a question. This is Kelly again. So I'm a former school board member, so I was totally jealous of this project and wishing that we had done something like this in my school district, although we don't have riparian property. But the one question I have and I can't remember if you mentioned it early on in the presentation. What commitment did you get from the school district that this area would never be sold or modified? Because, you know, sometimes there's pressures on school district for um, consolidating properties and whatnot. Uh, good question. I'll take a first crack at it. Um, so uh, we have a five year agreement um, for this funding screen. And so obviously, you know, it, for the life of a tree, five years is nothing. That's a, you know, a flash in the pan. Uh, but for this funding stream, they only required five years of commitment to just, you know, maintain this as a forest. Um, there were, there are some maintenance kind of requirements baked in, but uh, as Jody alluded to earlier, what we kind of do is we, we just, if the landowner isn't doing the maintenance that we asked them to do and that they said they're going to do, we just contract it out separately to make sure it gets done. You know, I kind of I care more about the trees growing than about you know kind of following the initial plan. Um, so the the district really all they had to agree to was five years to not you know develop or sell uh, this area. But also, as Jody alluded to earlier, it's in a floodplain, uh, and there's you know right of ways down there and all sorts of stuff. And so they were certain that 
this was never going to turn into anything else, so they may as well forest it. And then the other section across from the governor's house, um, I believe there was a conservation easement on it, um, and the inclusion of that into this project and reforesting that would uh, made that easement more valuable, I, I believe, and Jody might have more info on that. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly, but um, they, they weren't going to use that land for anything. It's just kind of that property uh, bordered Northeastern School District, so the governor had sold uh, them that land, but it's it's not really right up next to any of their campuses, uh, so they, they weren't going to use it for anything uh, currently. And just a follow up, is there signage at all, educational signage, so that, you know, if random community members are checking it out that they kind of understand the purpose of the project on site. So we do do that at other places. Uh, we have not done that with the school. Um, and I, I don't know. I don't know if that's something that they will add or not, uh, since it's not a park or something. Uh, I'm not sure if they'll add signage, but definitely can educate the teachers to continue to educate the students and use it and that way there's just endless educational opportunities. Maybe they can get the ELA students to come up with something. A graphic artists, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love this project. I think it's an amazing example of collaboration. And I, Ryan, you used the word magical, and that's what I was thinking about as I was listening to this. It just seems like the stars aligned and what a beautiful example of community and school involvement and leveraging your partners. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Does anybody else have anything that they want to type in? We have about four minutes before we're officially supposed to end. And I don't see the little bubbles moving. So I guess if nobody else has questions, I would just love to be able to share some speaker appreciation with Jody and Ryan. So if you can get your clapping emojis working, that would be wonderful. This was really great. Thank you for volunteering your time to share this case study with us. And just a reminder, folks, that we are going to leave this session and I believe, uh, Adriana, you can correct me. I think we have another plenary or it could be another, um, we, we're jumping right into the next session of breakouts. No, we're going back to the plenary and um, EPA will introduce the, you know, the next sessions. So there's been some confusion. Um, everybody should leave this session go back to the agenda, click on the, the title for the next plenary session that starts at 11, leave that session and come back and then choose your breakout session that you're going to go to. So it causes problems if you have multiple windows open at a time, it might not let you in. So make sure you leave this session and then go to, so you'll be using that agenda to go back and forth, but you should only have one Teams open at a time. And then that should help you go in and out of the, the plenary and breakout sessions. Thanks for the reminder, Adriana. I couldn't remember if there was a plenary. Well, thanks everybody for your time. It was a pleasure and we will see you in another session soon. Thank you.